character is, is you get to ask questions while we're on of all of the other people who are authorities on the subject. You're alone in your office, and you have to come up with the answers yourself when the patients come in. True. <laughs> uh, like, for example, if I'm your patient and I say, okay, just a second, hold on. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, top 10 cities in the United States. We're one of the top 10 cities in the United States for dry eye. And I don't even know what it is. It's a dry atmosphere and environment out there. Correct. Is that what causes dry eye? Well, that's one of the problems. There's many problems that exacerbate a dry eye symptom. There's um, anything from ceiling fans to, well, we just live in a desert, so it's very, very dry. Yeah, I'm just thinking, okay, let me see. I have ceiling fans in almost every room, and I live in Phoenix, Arizona. Am I going to know that I have dry eye just because it feels that way? Does it feel gritty? Well, there's a lot of symptoms to, to dry eye, some of them being gritty, dry, sandy, foreign body sensation, and actually a teary, watery eye is actually a symptom of dry eye. Okay, wait, watery and dry eye. That seems to be peculiarly antithetical. Th that is confusing, actually, but actually... Excessive tearing is a symptom of dry eye. Um, what occurs is that your, your tears are composed of several components, and if any of those components are deficient, then you actually have what's called a reflex tearing. It's in response to a foreign body sensation, so your eye's trying to basically wash out any type of offending agent. I was reading the material in advance of this because I don't uh, oh, know anything about it. <laughs> well, I don't know anything about dry eye myself, and fortunately I haven't experienced it, at least to my knowledge, and I found out there's different kinds of tears, different layers of tears. There are. There's primarily three layers of tears. There's an outer oily layer, which is, helps prevent against evaporation of your normal tears. Mm -hmm. There's an inner aqueous layer, your middle layer, and then there's a mucin layer. All three of those compose your normal basal tear. You know, a whole bunch of people are probably saying, well, wait a minute, who is this lady? Did she come in with Dr. Skye, or is she the rolfing lady? Introduce <laughs> yourself to the audience. Oh, hello, I am Dr. Gieske. I work at Sharp Revision Eye Care. Dr. Terry Gieske, and, uh, and that location that you have is located where in the valley? In, uh, East Mesa, Mesa, Arizona. One of the many eye specialists that we have in here regularly, the eye care doctors of Arizona coming in here to let you know about all of the things that can go wrong, unless, of course, you take care of it yourself in advance. By the way, can we do anything preventatively about dry eye? Oh, there's, there's very many things that we do to treat dry eye. Um, some of the basic modalities include an artificial tear. There's artificial tear formulations over the counter, and there's many of those. Um, um, Give me an idea, though, of how we should choose uh, the artificial tears, because I have been told in the past that uh, there are some things you have to be careful of when you're buying them over the counter, and maybe even some prescriptions that wouldn't necessarily be good for every individual. Well, exactly, and it really depends on what level of the tear film is deficient, which depends on which tear, tear comp... Uh, component really needs to be addressed. And so if you have an aqueous deficiency, you need a different type of artificial tear versus a mucin deficiency. And really, you would need an eye exam to determine which tear film, uh, tear supplement is best for you. Therein, the reason why you should have an eye doctor and go exactly. to see that eye doctor regularly. But how regularly? Uh, once a year. You definitely need to see, and we don't just treat dry eye. I mean, there's so many other things that you need to determine um, the health of your eye. So there's so many things that we look at. So it's very important to check the health of your eyes out every year. Conditions like macular degeneration that we've been Correct. talking about here, and the tests that you can do, the DNA tests that you can do. And in fact, I did one just this past week. They're sending it in. And I thought, well, okay, there's nothing that could be any more effective than my finding out at the same time that everybody else does if I'm a candidate for macular degeneration. Uh, and it's and so it, simple. Yeah, it's just a swab right. it's inside your cheek. Uh, what about, what about high-risk people for dry eye? Well, we do other things besides, obviously, artificial tears. There's a punctal plugs, which is where we go and include the puncta in the office to help you contain, you know, uh, retain your tears within your tear film. Would you say that uh, word again? What kind of plug? Punctal. P-U-N. 
TCA. <laughs> punctal. Ah, oh, don't make me spell it. No, it's perfect. Punctal. Yeah. And basically, your puncta is in the corner of You're your eye. You're not being graded. On, oh, good. On oh, very good. Uh, your puncta is in the corner of your eye. And it drains all your tears out of your eye into mm -hmm. your nose. And so, therefore, if you occlude that, you can actually retain those tears inside your eye. And so, helping the evaporative process. Basically, the volume of tears. You know, guys are told almost from the time they're three or four years old, it's not masculine to cry. Actually, it's very good for you to cry, right? Oh, you well, you need a nice, moist tear film. Otherwise, obviously, you're going to have those dry eye conditions. But there's so many other things we can do. I mean, if you have a severe problem, we have uh, steroid drops, which we can prescribe. We have Restasis. Restasis is a prescription. Um, if there's a bacterial component to your dry eye, we actually prescribe antibiotics. Um, Warm compresses are actually incredibly helpful for dry eye patients. So there's many, many therapies. Can dry eyes also be a result of allergies? Absolutely. The hallmark sign of allergies is actually itching. So without the itching component, it is very unlikely that it would be just dry eyes. But the dry eye symptoms, the gritty, burning, uh, gritty sensation that you get can also accompany allergies. So allergies um, and dry eyes sometimes go hand in hand. I work with a man, as a matter of fact, that uh, his eyes are so affected by his allergies that he has to turn the lights off in his office and just work with natural light coming through the windows. Wow. Because his eyes are so sensitive. Is it as a result of extreme dry eye? That Well, that probably several different things going on at one time. You don't typically just have one thing. You have several things a lot. And so you need to address all of them. So. Uh, all right, but if, if I'm addressing all of them, then am I taking good care of my eye health? Or is, is, is a condition like dry eye that a lot of us don't take that seriously, uh, is it potentially serious enough that we really ought to get it treated by a doctor? Oh, absolutely. Dry eye um, left untreated, if it's very severe, can cause actual scarring of your cornea, can cause many problems, which can lead to loss of vision. So yeah, it's, it can be a very, very serious condition. And it goes hand in hand a lot with some medical conditions so you know diabetes it goes so it definitely needs to be treated if you began to tear up as a matter of fact as a result of your emotional response to this interview <laughs> uh, listen all I can tell you is is that maybe you're doing pretty well for yourself but don't let that maybe take care of it see see what it says here eyehealthdoctors.com please jot that down and know there are doctors throughout the entire valley that can take care of you on either side of your nose this is pat mcmahon hey i don't know whether rolfing has anything to do with your eyes but i know that we're going to find out what it does have to do with coming up you're going to get rolfed that's the island greeting that we send to you from the land